Ladies and gentlemen, with E3 2017, one announcement in particular is highly anticipated from Camp Microsoft. That, of course, would be the Xbox Scorpio. We've heard many details of it for the past year or so, and we do have a pretty good inkling of what the final specifications will be. But, my name's Paul, and in this Shrey Gaming Telecom video we have one announcement prior to E3 2017, and that is that Microsoft have managed to free up yet another one gigabyte of memory for the Scorpio. So, just to put this into some level of perspective, Scorpio does actually ship with 12 gigabytes of GDDR5. Now, initial reports from Microsoft told us that they were aiming to have 8 gigabytes of RAM for games, 4 gigabytes of RAM for the system. Now, you might be wondering what the 4 gigabytes was actually needed for. Well, don't forget that the dashboard and all of the interface in general was, of course, being created now for 4K. That means that the actual software itself not only needed the memory to run, but also you had to account for the fact that it was running at a much higher resolution. Remember, 4K versus 1080p is four times the amount of pixels on screen. But, according to a tweet from Mike Yabara, who is the Corporate Vice President of Xbox and Windows Gaming Platform, that is not a short title, which is perhaps another thing that Microsoft could slightly work on, the titles of its employees, but I digress. They have confirmed, Mike in this case, that they have freed up an additional gigabyte of memory for games developers, which is absolutely spiffing. That's a word you don't really get to use too often, is it? Spiffing. <laughs> I say, old chap, I would have no idea what's going on with me today, for non-regular viewers, I apologise. Anywho, what's even better about this is a second tweet from Yabara, and he confirms that if a game does not utilise this additional memory, the memory instead can be used as caching. So let's put a base scenario in place, let's say that a game uses let's say 6 gigabytes of RAM, so for those bad at math, that means 3 gigabytes is essentially up for grabs, it's not doing anything. Well, what can happen with that memory? Well, typically, nothing. In a traditional system, it would just be sitting there doing absolutely bupkus. However, now with Scorpio, according to Yabara, if it's working as intended, which obviously we won't know until, you know, we see it in action, instead it will be used to cache um, well, code. So, in theory, the game will load faster. Now, this tweet is somewhat ambiguous. It is not exactly the most uh, comprehensive, but it appears anyway it will work with all games. So, one can make the assumption, and once again, it's a little bit ambiguous, um, that it will work with older titles as well. So, if this is the case, if you have an older game, let's say, just for the sake of argument, one of the launch titles, and you were to put in this game into Scorpio, the game would, in theory, load faster. Now, don't don't forget, of course, Scorpio has a few other tricks up its sleeve um, than the original Xbox One anyway. It has a faster hard drive and all that jazz, but this is very good news. Now, in terms of Project Scorpio, it is definitely more powerful than the PlayStation 4 Pro. I know that might upset people, but hey, those are the brakes. That is what it is. The PS4 Pro probably going to be cheaper, but unfortunately for Microsoft, the Scorpio is definitely considerably faster. Not only does it have a faster CPU, it's confirmed to be running at 2.3 GHz, which is admittedly only a mild upclock compared to the PS4 Pro, which is around 2.1. But there are 40 compute units inside the uh, Scorpio, which is, once again, not a massive jump over the PS4 Pro, which has 36. You're only looking at four additional CUs, so that doesn't sound that much. The difference lies in the clock speed. And this, to me, is perhaps the most impressive of these specifications of the Scorpio. And that is, the PS4 Pro is running just over 900 MHz, 911 to be precise, whereas Scorpio is running at 1172. This provides the uh, amount of T-flops we keep hearing, the six T-flops of compute performance, which definitely does decimate the PS4 Pro. There is a few other changes that we've heard multiple times over, so I don't really want to, you know, smother the video with stuff we've already quite aware of, for example, the fact that it supposedly has DirectX 12 baked right in, in terms of the instruction set onto the GPU and other bits and pieces, which essentially means a lot of offloading from the CPU. However, 
Um, that combined with the sheer amount of memory bandwidth that the Scorpio has, 326 gigabytes per second, should mean that titles do run rather nicely on Project Scorpio. There are a couple of questions, which is pretty obvious. The first, pricing. The second, how is it going to compare against the PS4 Pro with multi-platform games? Because ultimately, let's say you're a developer. Let's take the Let's pretend you're a developer that's only creating games for consoles. Does that mean that games are going to look essentially identical between the Scorpio and the PS4 Pro? I imagine there's not going to be a great deal of difference. What they could possibly do is develop with Scorpio in mind, maybe have a slightly higher uh, resolution. We all know that Tekken, for example, is not running exactly the highest resolution. Tekken 7, just to clarify, is running exactly at 4K on any system right now. So there is definitely a lot of room left in the tank. But for games which are being developed for the PC in mind, this is definitely going to be a boon, not just for Scorpio, because essentially they can just slightly reduce the settings, or perhaps drastically reduce settings, depending on the title, uh, for the Scorpio or the PS4 Pro. But also, one of the, I guess, downfalls about PC gaming right now is a lot of games, not all games, but a lot of games, don't have all assets being developed for 4K gaming in mind. So yes, natively the frame buffer is being rendered, uh, let's for the sake of argument say 1440p or 4K, unfortunately a lot of the assets aren't necessarily developed with that insane resolution in mind, simply because if you're a developer, let's even be very, you know, let's just be very crazy about this and say that the PC, the PS4 and the Xbox One uh, sorry, the Xbox have one third of the market share each. So let's assume that you're selling a million games and let's say 333,000 are being sold on the PS4, another 333,000 on the Xbox, and so on and so on. Well, you're essentially only developing a version of the game which is going to require those assets only for PC. And I'm not saying it won't sell. I'm not saying that it's not going to be worth it because obviously PC gamers typically respond fairly well for games which are well optimized as we've seen in the past. A lot of titles that, for example, were on console and then given a makeover for the PC definitely do get fairly well, uh, a fairly good reception. But with the idea that those assets could definitely be put to more use on Scorpio, that's obviously a good thing. With all of that said, in my opinion, although Microsoft have the hardware and I feel they have very good hardware, to me, there is only one question, and really and truly, it's down to E3 for us to know this. What games are they going to have? What other projects are they going to have? Is it going to be more augmented reality? Is a crap ton of rumours going around with Project Scorpion. To be honest, most of them are so ambiguous, I don't really want to put too much stock in them, at least in this video, but really it comes down to what games are we going to have. And yes, I'm sure we're going to probably hear uh, if not at E3, probably soon or later, we're going to hear rumours about like another Halo or perhaps another, you know, and obviously we're going to have like Forzas and all of this stuff that pretty much right now are synonymous with the Scorpio, so with the Xbox. But one area I feel the PlayStation has definitely won in, and that is games which aren't that necessarily new, uh, sorry, um, well established. Yes, of course you have, you know, the new Last of Us. Yes, of course you've got. God of War, yes of course you've got Gran Turismo, yes of course you've got those games which have been fairly well established on the franchise, sorry, uh, fairly well established on the platform, you've got those established franchises, but Microsoft, uh, sorry, Sony have also invested in new property, and that's obviously paying dividends to them, it's, it's meaning that they've got a good install base, so ultimately I do want to see Microsoft really hit hard on Sony, because in my opinion, it's good for the market. I would love to see games being exclusive to the Scorpio. I know that's going to also oh, on on the Xbox platform. I know it's going to upset people because exclusives do piss people off. Unfortunately, if all games were available on every platform, let's for the sake of argument say that there was no exclusive for the PlayStation, there was no exclusive for the Xbox, there was no exclusive for the Switch. Realistically, any buying guide ever would just tell you to buy a PC, because ultimately you get better performance on a PC. Or, to put it another way, if you're an Xbox owner, or you're not um, yet invested in this generation of consoles, you're of course just going to go with the Scorpio, because ultimately it has better hardware 
Therefore, if all games were the same across every platform, the Scorpio would just basically win hands down. As it is, the Scorpio is going to have the hardware advantage, the PlayStation is going to have the software advantage, so really all eyes are on Microsoft to tell us, hey, which one of these platforms is going to be, you know, the winner. And finally, I guess this does bring us to what Sony are going to do and counter. And personally, I don't think we're going to be hearing the PlayStation 5 or at the C3. I think it's going to piss way too many people off. Won't be surprised if we hear rumors about PlayStation 5 maybe at the end of the year or maybe next year, with it possibly having a 2019 release date. Don't think we're going to hear about it. And now with like a release date in like January of 2018, I think that's way too early. But as always, well, I don't have all the answers because ultimately I do not work with each of these companies, and they don't unfortunately di um, they don't you know diverge or uh, divulge all of this information to me. With all of that said, hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.